Marcus, and we want to thank each of you for coming out and being part of this today. We also want to thank you for masking up and uh, helping us as we try to uh, honor our COVID-19 precautions. Uh, we will be going over our, the, the tragic incident that we have experienced this weekend. We're very sorry again to have to come and, and talk about something like this with our, our uh, San Marcos Police Department family. We will take a few questions afterwards, two or three questions, um, and then uh, we do have the officer's pictures you'll see here to, here to my right. Um, a few things. We know we've already had folks that have reached out to us and with their generosity to talk about donations for the families, and we will have information on that set up on our uh, San Marcos Police Department uh, Facebook page, as well as we'll put information in our press release that we'll send out later today. And uh, we already have funds set up, uh, the latest one for, for Officer Paul Beller, so they'll be very quickly and easily set up, and we'll get that information out to the public. And we do thank everyone for their generosity. We've already had people uh, providing donations, and, and we thank you for that very much. Uh, joining me at the podium today, uh, we do have our uh, Mayor Jane Hewson here to my right, and we also have Director of Public Safety Chase Stapp is to my left, and then Interim Ch uh, Police Chief Bob Klett is going to speak to us and, and give us details on the incidents. Thank you. It's with a heavy heart that I stand before you today to provide details about the fatal shooting incident at Twin Lake Villas Apartments on Hunter Road that occurred uh, Saturday evening. The tragedy resulted after our officers responded to the apartment complex following a call for 911 call for domestic disturbance about 6.05 p.m. Uh, yesterday. During the course of their response, the suspect ambushed officers inside with a rifle. Following the breach of the residence by the Hayes County SWAT team, SMPD, and multiple responding agencies, the shooter was found inside the residence of the apartment complex deceased from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Officer Justin Putnam was fatally wounded at the scene, and Officers Franco Stewart and Officer Justin Mueller were wounded and transported to Ascension Seton Hayes, where they underwent surgery last night. Both officers are in critical but stable condition in the ICU. We lost a fine young man, a faithful officer and friend last night. Justin Putnam was 31 years old and had been an SMPD officer for five and a half years. He uh, graduated from Texas State University, magna cum laude, and so he understood what it took to police a wonderfully diverse community like San Marcos and a college community and, and serve it very well. And he leaves uh, behind a fiance and, and a family that also uh, has public safety background, so we, we pray for the family. Our two wounded officers have both been with SMPD as officers for less than a year. Officer Franco Stewart has been with SMPD for five months, and prior to that he was an officer with the McAllen Police Department for two and a half years. Officer Justin Mueller has been an SMPD officer for 10 months, and prior to that he served as one of our telecommunications operators for more than 11 years. Our prayers are with these two officers and their families as they fight to recover from their wounds. The deceased shooter has preliminarily been identified as Alfredo Perez de la Cruz, date of birth January 13, 1974, of San Marcos. We are working with the Texas Rangers to confirm his identity and if he has a criminal record as it appears he may have operated under several different aliases. I want to thank several of our uh, regional partners in law enforcement and agencies who have assisted us with this tragedy. We are so appreciative of each of you. Texas Rangers is taking the lead on the investigation and then a swarm of agencies came out to help us last night and I'll probably forget some but Hayes County Sheriff's Office, Kyle Police Department, Buda Police Department, New Braunfels Police, Texas State University Police Department, Constables, Highway Patrol, and, and certainly EMS and fire were critical in helping save our, our two officers' lives. 
As many of you know, this is a second line of duty death for the San Marcos Police Department since Officer Kenneth Copeland was shot and killed while serving a warrant on December 4th, 2017. Uh, we ask the community for its prayers and support. Uh, we're certainly going to need it. And uh, we will provide additional information as it becomes available. Thank you. I'll entertain a few questions. Uh, the family members are fine. Uh, the initial call was that uh, he had hit his wife, uh, that there was other endangered people possibly inside, and that alcohol was involved. When did the gunfire transpire? Uh, officers uh, knew that one of the victims were outside and that there was probably some more inside, so they had to make entry into the apartment. As they entered, he ambushed them. He was prepared, ready for them to come in and started shooting immediately, um, and there was nothing they could do to escape the gunfire. Do the officers have any kind of body protection? Uh, the officers had their body armor that they normally wear. Uh, I'd like to mention also that part of his preparation for the officers coming in, the, the, the suspect did as well. Thank you for being here. Um, like I said, we've We've had a lot of tragedy recently, and uh, we appreciate those prayers uh, from the community, and thank you for being here today.